Hello and welcome back to another installment of our monthly FAQ series. This month we'll be answering some questions you have about our latest products. Since our last firmware update, we've gotten a lot of questions about the Aurora Pro App Store. You may have noticed that it has disappeared and along with it, access to any apps that were not already installed. It was a difficult decision to remove the App Store, but we ultimately decided that the third-party App Store that we used for the Aurora Pro was not up to our standard of quality. For one, the old apps did not support Dolby Vision. They also lacked usability since they did not allow you to log into YouTube and some other popular apps. We hope to bring a better App Store to your Aurora Pro soon. In the meantime, we recommend using an external streaming device, such as a Fire TV Stick or Roku. These devices usually support Dolby Vision and all of the apps in their store will behave predictably and allow you to log in. Overall, this means that you can enjoy a more seamless viewing experience than with the old Aurora Pro App Store. While using an external streaming device set to the wrong resolution or HDMI settings, you may experience strange visual glitches including flickering, color banding, or dark splotches covering the screen. To fix this issue, we recommend using the following steps to ensure your streaming devices work seamlessly with your Aurora Pro. If you have an Amazon Fire TV Stick, set Dynamic Range Settings to Adaptive, set Resolution to Automatic, and set HDMI CEC Device Control to On. If you have a Roku, set Display Type to 4K TV. If you have an Apple TV, Set Format to 4K SDR 60Hz. Set HDMI Output to RGB High. Set Match Dynamic Range to On. And set Match Frame Rate to Off. You can find these settings and more in our Aurora Pro Settings Guide. Download it on our website at Services, Support Center, Projectors, Aurora Pro, Downloads, or use the link in the description below. If this does not solve the issue, please try restarting your projector and updating your streaming device. If that still does not help, try using a different HDMI port. Also, make sure that you're using a certified HDMI cable, such as the one that came with your streaming device. If you need a certified HDMI cable, you can easily find one online. We recommend this 8K HDMI cable from High Wings. If you're still experiencing the same visual glitches, please take pictures of your streaming device settings and email them to us at cs at nexigo.com for further troubleshooting. If you don't have a streaming device, you can also sideload apps onto the Aurora Pro by downloading APK files on your computer. I'll walk you through how to do this, but please keep in mind that any apps downloaded from unauthorized sources may pose a security threat. We cannot guarantee the safety of any APK files, so please download at your own risk. Before you download any apps, head to the Settings menu of your Aurora Pro and go to General. Set Unknown Sources to On. This will enable you to download third-party apps from an external drive. In this demo, we'll be using a simple USB drive, but any storage device will work as long as it's in FAT32 format. Next. Use a computer to download the APK file for the app you want to install onto your Aurora Pro. You can find them at apkmirror.com and other sites. Not all APK files will install properly onto the Aurora Pro. To find an app that is compatible with your projector, make sure to download a file that is marked as universal across devices and choose one that has no DPI. Don't download an APKM file as the Aurora Pro cannot read these files. Once you download the APK file, copy it over to your USB drive and then eject the device. Then, plug the USB drive into your Aurora Pro and open it by selecting Home, then USB, then select your USB drive. Go to the APK folder and select the file you want to install. Once the app is finished installing, you can access it from the Aurora Pro homepage by navigating to Settings, Applications. Another issue that has been reported to us this month is that the Meeting 360 is not selectable as a microphone device in the Windows Camera application. 
Luckily, there's an easy workaround to set the Meeting 360 as your microphone when it isn't selected by default. In the camera application, go to Settings and set the audio to match the default system settings. Then, click the links below to go to the Windows Audio In and Out device settings. There, you can set the microphone and speaker to the Nextigo Meeting 360. Your conference cam should now work as an audio recording device in the camera application. Here's a quick tip for you about optimizing your P620 setup with fewer cables. To start off, connect the P620 to both Ethernet and power separately and set it up normally over LAN. For more info on how to do that, check out this instructional video. Once you have the web interface open on your computer, go to the settings and change the first stream and code protocol to H.265. If you want to preview video in the computer over USB, set second stream resolution to 1280 by 720. If using HDMI to preview the video, no change is needed to the second streaming resolution. We have one last tip for you and it's about the new Generation 3 GripCon. Did you know that you can stream from the Switch using the Gen 3 GripCon using a capture card, just like you can with a normal Switch dock? To set it up, plug the GripCon into a capture card using an HDMI cable. Plug the controller into HDMI in. Press and hold the button on the back of the GripCon to switch to HDMI docking mode. Then, plug a computer into the capture card using a USB cable using the data port. Once your computer is connected, open up OBS or another streaming studio app. First, add a new video capture device and select your capture card as the source. Your gameplay should appear in OBS. You can now use OBS Virtual Camera to stream your Nintendo Switch gameplay directly to Twitch and other streaming platforms. If you'd like, you can connect a TV or monitor to the HDMI out port on the capture card to make it easier to see your game. Don't forget to connect a couple Joy-Cons or a Nexigo NS32 to play while the Switch is in docked mode. That's all for today. Don't hesitate to leave a question down below if you're experiencing any other tech issues. We'll be sure to get back to you either in the comments or in another FAQ video. See you next time!